Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's episode 102 of, or sorry, episode 103 of the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. And in today's episode, we have a very special guest, Amy K. Wilson, a board-certified geriatric pharmacist. She's a nutrition coach, nutrition coach, health coach. Uh, she's she's on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. She's on all the social platforms. And I was just checking out her content actually prior to our interview. Tons of valuable information on there. You know, people are, you know, always looking for the quick fix around health and wellness. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, the quick fix will cause more pain and suffering over the long haul. So Amy's here to share with uh, to share with you all um, that, you know, through a little bit of hard work and dedication, right? A little bit of daily consistency, we can completely transform our life through fitness and nutrition. So welcome to the show, Mamie. Have, happy to have you on the Mindset Podcast and super stoked to uh, for you to share all of your knowledge and wisdom with our listeners. Hey, Alex, I am super excited to be here. I think it's going to be a great conversation. So much to talk about. Absolutely. So let's let's dive right into it and let's talk about we were we were briefly chatting before the interview and your chat we were chatting a little bit about like how again like people are kind of they're they're trying to they're trying to go use pharmaceuticals they're trying to use um like Ozempic and all these other drugs and stuff like that. So like maybe tell our listeners like you know is that really a good idea? Um, to try and take that those short, kind of shortcuts for again our hormones and our long term long term health. Oh, let me let me first say you know I'm not going to hear and get, get on a, a judgy thing. I I totally understand why people look at this avenue. I understand if you're on it why you're on it. But let's talk about a side effect profile. Let's talk about things that you need to think about if you're thinking about going on it. Maybe don't want to go on it or you're on it already. So Ozempic is what's called a GLP-1. It's a glucagon-like peptide. That's a hormone that's found in the gut. This is a great and important discovery of a hormone that we didn't know that existed and how it works with insulin. GLP-1 is normally stimulated when we eat protein and it helps us feel satisfied. It helps us feel full. What Ozempic does is kind of like a GLP on steroids. Normally what happens is you eat, GLP gets excreted and you know you get full and it goes away. It doesn't stay in the body that long. Well, something like Ozempic is given once a week and it's a GLP one on, like we want to say black pair term steroids. And what it does, it also goes into the brain where there's also GLP one receptors and it kind of shuts off the appetite and people are like, okay, side me up. It's going to make me not hungry. This is exactly what I need. But wait, there's always side effects. And that's what we keep forgetting about, whether it's a, and I'm seeing it, we were just talking about this a second ago. I'm seeing all these new supplements that are coming out that are, that are promising dramatic weight loss, that they work like Ozempic or, Hey, if you take this, you will get X, Y, Z results. When something is quick and whether it's natural or not, it still has side effects. So what happens with Ozempic and why is that so serious? Especially for, you know, I would say even midlife women and men, our goal should be to keep muscle. Absolutely need to keep muscle. You know, like I said, you said I was a board certified geriatric pharmacist. I work in nursing homes. I see the outcome of poor lifestyle decisions, unfortunately. So I'm seeing exactly what happens when you decide to go on a road of quick fixes, skinny, or just say, I'm not doing anything at all. So the problem with the GLP-1 or Zempic, Wagovi, Monjero, there's a plethora that's going to be coming out this year, is that, yes, it does shut down your appetite. Okay, great. No, it stops digestion. You're like, great. Mm -hmm. No, that's not great because in some people it can be a terminal thing called gastroparesis, which means you are going to have this for the rest of your life. It totally shuts down your GI tract. And let me tell you, that is 10 times worse than trying to, trying to lose weight. It is horrible. But what most people will experience is a quick weight loss. And you're like, hey, that's amazing. That's what I want. Here's the problem. You're not hungry. You're not eating. Okay. That's the problem. 
And everybody's like, but that's what I don't want to do. That's the why, that's why I'm gaining weight. That's why, no, it's not. It's the quality of food, it's nutrition, and it's probably the lack of muscle building. But when you are not eating because of these medications or a fad diet or starvation, whatever you're doing, your body needs amino acids. Our bodies are smart and it's going to get amino acids from your muscle. Well, ladies and gentlemen, muscle is your metabolism. It is your fountain of youth. If you want to age backwards, you need muscle. The other thing your body needs is vitamin minerals. If you're not giving it vitamin minerals, guess what it's going for? The bones. So now we're talking about osteoporosis. We're talking about osteopenia. And what we're looking at is increasing how fragile you are. And that is something that you shouldn't even be thinking about until you're in 80s and 90s. And we look at geriatrics and think, oh, how fragile they are. I swear we're going to start seeing old lady syndrome in 35-year-olds who are on this medication. We're going to start seeing the saggy skin, the wrinkles, and no muscle tone. And it's like, and bone breaks and fractures. That's not healthy. Skinny is not healthy. And we have to get that out of our narrative because we so think that skinny is the end all be all, but it's not. And I understand when the quick fix, believe me, there's times I'm like, dang, but where will they be in 20 and 30 years? That's what we got to think about. Not tomorrow, yeah. not the Instagram feed that we're like going, okay, I want this, I want this, I want this. Where will you be in 20 and 30 years? Will yeah. you be in a nursing home? Will you be still taking care of yourself, being able to do your own, you know, your own grocery shopping? Where are you going to be? And we need to start training for that future self and stop worrying so much about the quick fix and that certain size or that certain weight that we think that that's going to make us happy because really it's not. Yeah. And you really, you really nailed it because like. Um, I was taught from a really young age, you have to move like Alex, like, I don't care what sport you do. My dad's just like, we're going to put you into something. He's like, what do you, what do you, you know, what do you want to try son? And I'm like soccer. Cause at the time I was like really into running and I was running everywhere and he could see it. He could see that I love to run. So that's what I started with. I started with soccer and everything kind of blossomed from there. And it all started with running and mm -hmm. Because I was a you know a skinnier kid, I could run like the wind because I didn't have much weight to me. But it got to a point where I was still very muscle bound because my dad, you know, he didn't he didn't encourage me to start doing weight training until I was about 12, 12, 13. Because he's like, yeah, you don't really want to start getting into that until you're about you know fifteen, sixteen. Because start early, but because your bones are still growing, you're still growing, right? Uh, getting bigger. So I started with push ups and just ten pound dumbbells with doing curls. So when I was that young, I was like, all of a sudden from age like 12 to 15, boom, it was like, the guys are like, I was playing lacrosse, I was playing soccer, I'm like, holy, what have you been doing? And it's like, my body was transforming, right? And it's, I didn't know any better. It's because I, you know, my dad, he's like, you can't do weight training yet. I'll let you, you know, I'll watch you, you'll, we'll train together. And you'll do a little bit, but you're still growing, you're still, you're, you're still aging. Um, and but it was just so profound, like the effects of, on my mental health and my physical health and just my your body, like your body does transform and it's not overnight. But mm -hmm. over time, that was over like four to five years of just daily training, like I just did exactly what my dad told me. And he's like, you wait, you're gonna, you the the kids are ahead of you now, but you're gonna you're gonna be here. And then all of a sudden, boom, I like I it was like leaps and bounds of growth physically and mentally. And that was just like, I was knocking out like 25 to 50 push-ups a day or more. Um, and I got stronger and stronger and stronger. And then doing a little bit of the, the bicep curls, that was it. And then eventually end of high school, I was like 17. That's when I really started to discover weight training. Cause I'm like doing all that running and I wasn't gaining weight. And I was like, man, dad, like, I need to gain weight. I feel like, you know, I'm ready to put on some muscle, right? Um, Cause I was still muscle bound, but again, not where I wanted to be. So you're talking about muscle. Muscle is the key to a long life and longevity. That's what people don't realize. It's like when you have more muscle, you burn more calories mm -hmm. and, and you 
you uh, you can you can still stay more self sufficient at an older age, like the right getting that movement in, being able to lift things on your own still, and a lot of people in their older years they're not able to do that because they don't have an, a, enough muscle. So. No, and that's honestly what I usually see is falls, hip breaks, um, you know, lots of fractures, not you know, shuffling. If you ever see a person who's not able to pick up their feet or I went to a symposium a long time ago because I'm a fitness instructor and this guy was talking about functional uh, fitness and he coined a term called buttlessness. And if you, if you see somebody who with a flat, butt, I mean, think about it. When you walk, you're using your glute muscles. When you're standing, you're using glute muscles. When you get up from a chair, you use your glute muscles. And he said, that is the one thing that you can tell how the longevity is somebody is by what their glute muscles are. So I, you know, yours, and I'm sure every woman was like, oh, wait, he put, he put on weight. And it's like, you have to understand that we have to get rid of the scale. And I know that's a hard, hard concept, especially for women. And I do coach a lot of men. I coach virtually. I have clients all over the world. So I do see it in a men too, that they get what they, they think they need to be at this certain weight. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you the shape that you want, the lifestyle that you want is not a number on your scale. And I know that's so hard because we think, oh, and everybody, I want you to think about that number that you think is going to make you happy. And throw it away now. Just take it out of your brain and throw it away because it's not going to make you happy. It's not going to get you the promotion, the boyfriend, the husband, whatever. But even you start working on your nutrition, feeding and fueling your body with what it needs and being able to build muscle because when you start fueling your body with what it needs in a specific amount and also building muscle, and I'm not meaning doing cardio and working out for hours, you can start turning yourself into a a fat burner and a muscle builder. And that's exactly what we want. We just don't realize that's what we want. And guess what? It does take time. And I know that's frustrating, but I always tell people embrace it. Today is your first day and you don't stop. We don't do these 10 day, 21 day fixes anymore. It doesn't work. The day that you stop is the day you stop breathing on this planet and understanding that there's always going to be ebbs and flows and ups and downs. And that's okay. That is life and embrace life. It's okay to have little ups and downs. The thing is that we're looking at the entire process and then you look at 30 days. Well, you know what? You didn't go backwards for 30 days. You may have had some ups and downs during those 30 days, but the rest of the time you were moving forward and that's what you need to focus on. Yeah. And speaking about that, speaking about you know the importance of daily movement for our long-term health and our long-term physical and mental health. Um, like what are, what are some ways that for yourself that how you train and eat that are like, you know, cause like when I was, when I was younger and I was an athlete, I was eating everything, a lot of the right things and a lot of the wrong things too. But I got to a point when I was 19, I'm like, I need to teach myself nutrition because mm-hmm. that totally, when I started reading about nutrition, reading about what like true like olympic athletes eat professional athletes they don't look at f- food necessarily as oh i'm i'm going to enjoy this they look at it as fuel they're fuel. like what yeah. what nutrition is going to fuel my performance today right and every other day before my games before you know uh the like whatever the nba finals the nhl playoffs um and that's when i started to notice that growth like and then Mm -hmm. building the muscle because my my uh, knowledge of nutrition changed it was like oh i can eat that because i'm burning so many calories it turned into no i know how awful i'm gonna feel if i eat that too many cookies or chocolate bars but if i you know eat more veggies you know like let's say like yam or sweet potato and like steak or chicken and I break down like how you have like the palette, right, of your mm-hmm. proteins, fats, and carbs when you're showing that infographic on your content. That's that's how I shifted from eating everything to eating the right more the more of the right things. I'm still not perfect, but like looking at food as fuel to fuel my mind and body. And when we kind of make that mental shift, you feel so much better. And when you feel so much better, your body craves that good food as well. So it's not like, it's like some people are like, oh, I'm not looking forward to my, you know, broccoli and carrots and chicken, but it's not, I don't look at food that way. I look at it as it's energy, it's potential energy, right? 
Well, and healthy food can taste good. You can yeah. do so oh, many yeah. things to healthy food. It doesn't have to be boring. What we have been taught in the past is that it's calories in versus calories out. And we got to get rid of the calories. Yes, yeah. the calories count. Yeah. They do. But it really is, when you're talking about protein, fats, and carbohydrates, those are called your macronutrients. And when I coach people, I'm coaching them how to track macros and looking at macronutrients instead of calories. So why is that so important? Our body is one big chemical reaction. I always tell people that we are overfed and undernourished. And what that means is we go out and we have a five-course meal and we have dessert and, you know, you had all this food. And you're like, yeah, but it was calories. I'm like, yeah, but how much nutrition was really in that? It was really over-processed, high saturated fats, things that are not good for your body. Our body is a chemical reaction. It's one big one. In order for things, I would say, to go boom, because if you're in member chemistry lab, you wanted things to go boom, right? Yeah. In order for yeah. our body to do that and to run on all cylinders, thinking about a car, is that you have to give it the proper stuff. You have to give it vitamins minerals, fats, protein, carbohydrates for our hormones to be amazing. Because guess what, women? Your thyroid needs some carbs. And if you are doing keto, low carb, you're not doing your thyroid any good. Our bodies need fat. So back in the day when I first dieted, everything was low fat and fat free. And then we replaced everything with sugar. Not a good thing. We also need protein. But you know, we see this the new phase is, oh, but all I have to do is eat protein and only protein. No, we have to have the balance of fats, carbs, and protein. And then, you know, if you want to do low carb, you can do what I do. It's called carb cycling. And you get kind of like the best of both worlds. You still have carbs and you go lower lower carb one, uh, one or two days a week. And you still are fueling your body with what it needs. That's not to say you're not going to have a cookie every once in a while. This girl needs her chocolate chip cookie. It's, it's balance. But when you start fueling your body, Yes, you're going to start building muscle. You're going to keep your muscle. And then you start becoming what's called a fat burner instead of a sugar burner. And if you're feeling hungry every two hours or you get up and like you just eat, 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 more than likely you're a sugar burner. Your body is always looking for the next kind of fix. And I always get that. It's like, but, but I'm addicted to sugar. I'm addicted to sugar. No, you're a sugar burner and your body is trying to find nutrition is trying to find energy. When you start fueling your body with what you need, I get this hundred percent of all my clients. Oh my gosh, I'm not craving sugar anymore. This is amazing. And I'm like, yeah, we just balanced your blood sugar. And when we did that with all the nutrition that you're getting, your body's like, oh, there's chocolate. Okay. I could take it or leave it. You're not craving it anymore. And it's, it's amazing when you start doing all these little things it's not only the inches that you lose and the muscle that you build, it's the mindset that gets better. It's the brain fog goes away. Maybe you had some aches and pains that go away because we're also working with chronic inflammation and that goes away. There's so many things that you can go check, 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 check that nutrition will help solve. It's like, it's, like it's a, crazy. It's a cascade of effects. Uh, it's crazy. Like, um, because when I was doing all my training and like playing sports and starting to do weight training at the same time, it was like, I still felt like I was chronically inflamed because I wasn't stretching enough. Mm -hmm. And my, and my, like, you're talking about like, you know, you're, I wasn't nourished enough. Like I was eating everything, not the right things, right? More of the right things. So as soon as you make that shift to eating more of the right things, like you said, your, your inflammation goes down, your mind feels better. And you start craving that feeling from the, like eating that more of that good food. And then it, you're, you're so energized. It's like you shift from, cause you can be an athlete and still have terrible energy, right? Cause it's like a huge spike. And then like these spikes of like huge energy and then zero. Right. Um, and so like, once you make those shifts, like with better eating and, you know, smarter training and then again, more, uh, better recovery too then you really start to feel like an energizer bunny a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's crazy what happens when you give your body what it really wants. We fight it so much. Oh, let's do Ozempic. Oh, let's do this latest supplement. We fight what our body truly, truly needs. And that does not mean 
healthy quote unquote foods because some healthy quote unquote foods is ultra processed. So it's not a frozen dinner. It's not this quick fix or going through this smoothie bar and thinking that you're doing your body good. Honestly, a smoothie bar is just a bunch of sugar. And, you know, once you start giving it the fuel that it wants and it needs, you sleep better. Headaches are gone. You start losing inches like crazy and you're like, wait a minute, I'm eating. I'm eating all this food and I don't understand why it wasn't working before. Because you weren't giving your body what it needs to function. And when you can give it what it needs to function, it's happy. Very happy. Yeah, it's eating again more the more of the right foods, and it, ma- it makes a huge difference. Um, oh, and I want to ask you, like, for your style of training, like I was looking at some of your content. Yeah. Do you do kind of like twenty to thirty minutes, like hit style, like with dumbbells and with barbells, or or do you do a hybrid mix of body weight training and dumbbells? Like, so it's a hybrid. Um, it's a kind of like all inclusive. So yeah. Yeah. all our workouts are 30 to 35 minutes. It's great because you get, you get doing your house or you get to do it at the gym. So it's, there's, I always call it the no excuse because yeah. it's there. It's like almost having a personal trainer come to your house. Yeah. So two days a week, we pair it with low carb day. We do hit training. The theory is, is by when you go low carb is that you actually get into more of a fat burning because you're because you are using all the readily available glycogen in your muscles. So we do HIIT training twice a week. Three days a week is lifting. And it is lifting, 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 meaning that it's not two pounds, three pounds. However, I will say if you are a beginner, that's where we're going to start. Yeah. But in six weeks, you're going to be going with eight pounds. I started probably with 15 pounds. I now lift anywhere between 35 and 40 pounds for some max for dumbbells. So so I guess 80 if you're doing 240s. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and, you know, females were scared of that. We're like, oh, my God, we're going to be Arnold. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. And guys, don't be scared of it either because some guys are scared of, of weight training. No, it's it's our friend. And then two days a week. This was very hard for me coming from being a fitness pro who's always like, you got to leave it on the floor and you got to work out an hour. Our workouts are 30, 35 minutes and two days a week is as active recovery. And that right. was a foreign concept to me because I used to think that was a waste of time. I'd be like, eh, no, <laughs> waste of time. Why yeah. do you do that? Let me tell you, your body needs to do active recovery. It needs to do yoga and stretch and just go for a walk. And to have that downtime, because we have to recover, we have to recuperate, we have to rebuild. But the other thing that I want people to understand is that that 30 minutes is 30 minutes of intense working out. That doesn't mean that's all you do. Your body craves movement. You have to get your steps in. You have to do NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It's a fancy, fancy word for meaning just move your body. So that's what you want to work on is get that workout, that solid 30 minutes in, and then just move your body the rest of the time. I love that. Well, that's all the time we got for today, Amy, but I absolutely want to do like another second or third interview with yeah, you and expand even more on the topic and even yeah. start doing like an Instagram live together or something like that. Perfect. Perfect. So, um, where can our listeners find you, connect with you? I know you're on all social platforms and, yeah. um, and then how can they connect with you maybe about your health coaching and and all that absolutely well i would love to give you a free five-day fat loss blueprint and you can find that um, by message me either on my website amykwilson.com a-m-y-k-w-i-l-s-o-n.com or if you're an instagrammer find me on instagram uh, uh follow me and send me a message and i am at the nutrition coach pharmacist that's at the nutrition coach pharmacist Absolutely love it. Really a uh, pleasure having you on the Mindset Podcast, Amy. And I'm really looking forward to us uh, doing even more interviews together and and uh, collabing on content for uh, for the listeners and for both our followers. Absolutely. Maybe we can do a Q&A one time. That'd I be love, awesome. I would love that. Yeah. yeah.